You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. How we doing? How we doing? You know, it brought to me, uh, Christy Sides and her staff, they have no head coaching experience. Other than Christy Sides being the coach and bringing them in. And folks, uh, when I look at this and I looked at it collectively, the Indiana Fever and the coaches have no coaching experience. And I tried to dig this one out. Caitlin Clark's lost the respect. And what has happened? How do we build to this point? How do we get to this point? And how do we reach a level of almost no return? Well, here's the deal, folks. What you got there is uh, the Indiana Fever coaching staff. These are all brand new coaches. It's their first year. Everybody's coming in there. Christy Sides coached last year. That's about it. Now, here's what you're doing. You got to go coach the college player of the year. You got to coach, coach an All-American who's actually coming in and ranked and coming in number one in the draft. So I had to figure out, well, let me go back and see how did this happen. Well, guess what? Indiana Fever have won back-to-back lottery picks, okay? Back-to-back lottery picks, that's how we got to this stage, okay? And for the life of me, I totally believe the Indiana Fever were not expecting the number one pick. They were not expecting that they would be the one that would be selecting Caitlin Clark, and they would be the one that have to develop and put Caitlin Clark in the right positions. Now, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Christy Sides, Karima Christmas Kelly, Jesse Miller, and of course you've got uh, Paul Miller, okay? And when you look at it, obviously, you gotta look at it that Christy Clyde, Christy Sides worked her way up in the ranks. I salute you, Christy Sides. However, this is not that part of the business. Um, basically, you have been given the head coaching job through your hard work and dedication, which I can respect that. However, the Indiana Fever uh, won the lottery, okay? And that's back-to-back. Now, when you win the lottery back-to-back, that means you're getting two high-level players. First player you select is Boston. Next player you select, of course, Caitlin Clark. Now, who's going to coach her? Who's going to coach her? Christy Sides is a head coach, never played in the league. Never played in the league, never had a head coaching job other than the Indiana Fever job. Okay, when you look at Karma, Karma, Karima Christmas Kelly, which is, excuse me on my pronunciation, but I'll give it to you, assistant coach, great player, played with the Mystics, the Tulsa Shock, Indiana Fever, the Shock, the Wings, went overseas and back to the Minnesota Lynx, and now she's a coach right now, first year, coming out, okay, with the Indiana Fever, okay, then we go over to assistant Jesse Miller, come out of University of Illinois, and you start looking at this. It is Miller's first WNBA coaching position after serving 10 years in the operations and video capacity with the Chicago Sky. Okay, so you, you got to ask yourself again. You know, and I, and, and I put in there and I, you know, I chatted with some fans on Facebook from Chicago Sky. And folks, here's, here's the deal. You got somebody trying to lead that don't know how to lead. You got somebody dealing with a player that potentially generational player came in here to actually lift this program up. And man, oh man, if you get to the breakdown of the film, it ain't pretty. And I mean, it is to the point where you're down to middle school where players don't know where they're going. So you get in here and then you say, okay, the Indiana Fever, I'm not there. I'm going to add Paul Miller. Okay, Paul Miller's going to be an assistant coach. Paul's been around the game, okay, uh, played ball. However, Paul came out of the NBA G League. Okay, so you got nobody with professional coaching experience. Now, here's the deal. You hire somebody. Normally, folks, this is how it works. You get hired as a coach. You know what? You're going to get you two, three veteran assistant coaches. Proven veterans assistant coaches to come and be in this league. Now, what happens when you got to do that? You got to pay them, okay? You got to pay them. The price, of, the price of admission in basketball hasn't changed. I repeat, the price of admission in basketball hasn't changed. You get what you pay for, okay? Indiana Fevers are paying Christy Sides. That's what you're getting, $500,000 a year. You want to step up to a million or $2 million a year, you got a whole nother breed of coaches that you can get to. You got a whole nother breed of assistants you can get to, but they ain't coming in for minimum wage. That, that, that's what you got. So all of this that has built up, as you notice, 
In my last report, we got Caitlin Clark versus Christy Sides. She's lost respect. Well, she's not only lost respect for Christy Sides, she's lost respect for the coaching staff. Now, be it as it may, because of public relations and her ability to be politically correct all the time, I got a feeling. You know that song they used to say, I got a feeling. I got a feeling that Caitlin Clark has figured it out and nobody on this staff knows how to do what I do. Nobody on this staff has played in the league as a point guard. Nobody on this staff has ever done it before. And guys, I've heard the name floating around. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if, if, if you want to get a coach, heck, you can go up to Utah and offer Lynn Roberts. To get, all the college coaches are making too much money. Okay, and this is the hardest part about the WNBA. Okay, the disparity of money being made from the college to the pro coach. Okay, so you got a college coach making five, six, eight million dollars a year, and you got the pro coach making less money than that. But the pros are supposed to be better than the college, and that's what they say. That doesn't always mean it's correct, but now I figured out why. The Indiana Fever have the problems they do. You bring in a coaching staff. Don't get me wrong. Christy Sides earned the job. I'm not going to disrespect it because I didn't follow it then. Okay, but here I am. I'm following it now, and I'm breaking it down, and I'm doing this story. And this is a really a, going to be an interesting story because it's Christy, It's really Caitlin Clark's road to the NBA championship. And what took place? How did it all? How did we get there? And what bumpy roads did we have? And folks, this is just a bumpy road that it's going to have to be looked at. It's going to have to be fixed. Okay, and you know if you ask me. You know, as a point guard, you know, you got to understand. You got to understand the rotations. You got to start an advancement of her plays. You know, she sees the development before it happened. I mean, I already knew she's a five-star, can pass it, can read it. You know, you look at it. If I, if I do a film breakdown, and, and guys, look, if I do a film breakdown, I mean, you got a number of guys standing around. You got, you got no spacing. You got, you got, I, I have never seen the buttock screen. I have never seen the buttock screen until I came and I'm watching the WNBA. And what is a buttock screen? That's where you stick your butt out and call it a screen. Normally, you get that player center and you chest them up and you run right into them, bam, and they run right into the pick. Indiana Fever do butt screens. That's where they stick their butt out. That's the only thing they're using for the screen instead of the body. They're not getting the low blaze. They're not sitting in the chair. And they're not ready to run off that and do a pick and pop or pick and roll. I'll, I'll bring that film to you and I'll show you that. But I mean, I don't want the situation to get any worse than what it is because Fever could still turn this around. But here's the deal. And Money Mike, when I say here's the deal, I'm just telling you here's the truth. That's my other way of saying here's the truth when I say here's the deal, is it's hard to repair something you don't know how to repair. Folks, don't get me wrong. When they, when they drafted Michael Jordan, they brought in Doug Collins, okay? They brought in Doug Collins for a reason, okay? They brought him in because Doug had played in the NBA. Doug had the experience to be able to coach Michael Jordan. Okay, that folks, that's what you're talking about. And Kaylin Clark's gonna be like LeBron James. I, I mean, if you don't know it, you don't know it, and don't try to fake it till you make it because you just don't know it. Okay, and that's why I was a little confused when I went to Prescott because normally professional coaches in the NBA they just call you out. You know, they don't like tell me what you did. You know, I mean, Curry be like, I don't know why Draymond's doing what he's doing. It's not helpful to the team. I mean, he'll tell it. Draymond's a good ball player. He's, you know, he's an ambassador. Enforce it for the Warriors, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you call these guys out like a fire on the butt. These, nobody's got the experience. Nobody's got the repertoire to back it up to say, look, I've been there. Okay, they can look at stacks, and this is where I tell you, folks, you can go to analytics all you want. If you hiring a coach off of analytics, you're making a bad mistake because once you get in there and get the eye test and you see what that coach can do and you know if they know basketball, here's the deal. What happened today? I get it. One or two things is happening. Either the Indiana Fever are completely going to retool the roster, and that's starting because, you know, you wave Celeste Taylor today, and that's a 15th pick in the first round. Okay, how do you miss this is where it gets kind of tricky. You, when, you, when you get a draft pick, boom, you got to punch that in the mouth and you got to take the best available player that's going to fit your roster. Now, this player has been defensive player of the year. What are the Fever trying to work on? Defense. Oh, my God, don't let me get started. You release a player that's defensive player of the year? 
Okay, don't even play it, man. Oh, man, I haven't figured this out. I guess the player wanted out. It could. Sometimes players can get released when they want it to be mutual, and sometimes it's not but mutual. But here's the deal, folks. Here's the truth. And at the end of the day, they hired Christy Sides, November 2, 22, come in here to be the coach. She's in her second year. She's hired Carmela Christmas Kelly, great player, first-year assistant coach, Jesse Miller coming over there as a video coordinator is now coaching Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston. Now, now think about that. You come from being a video coordinator to coaching two number one draft picks this, 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 that have come from South Carolina, Don Staley, and also Lisa Bluter. So you got two players, high academics, high academics. Academics, okay, and, and the fever may get better because they're getting another academia, okay, Finia is coming back and went to Harvard, transferred to USC, so that's another high IQ player that can figure things out, but you get back to back, okay, and now you're coming in and you've got coaches that have never done it before. I get it now. Boy, this has been something of a backtrack. Let me find out how this happened. Let me even find out, you know, salute to the uh, Chicago Sky because they made a blockbuster trade. I was like, what? Phoenix Mercury had an awful year, but they made a trade and they didn't draft. Okay, well, they traded to Chicago. These are things that happened in leagues where Chicago won that trade. But when you look at the Indiana Fever, and what they got going on, and the frustration they got going on, and you got back-to-back -back number one draft picks, and folks, you're coming from Don Staley, South Carolina, and Lisa Bluter, okay? Lisa Bluter coming out of there, Iowa. So you got to imagine between them two, my, 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 I mean, what did they lose? A handful of games between them? And now they're both here, and they're both playing, and you got players that are just not in, from the same regime. I mean, you, you you know, they talk about Blue Bloods. You talk about Kentucky. You talk about Duke. Okay, you talk about North Carolina. You know, you're getting into the Blue Bloods of the of, of, out there of college basketball and what the capabilities are and how much money they spend on the game. What this really <clears throat> told me is the WNBA, man, they got a whole lot more money to spend. Because if I look at, if I took the top coaches in the game today, Okay, the top coaches in the game today, in the NBA, in the WNBA, you look at the top coaches and don't get near the top coaches in college because that one's going to shock you. Okay, because the amount of money they pay for coaches and the amount of money the, the WNBA pays for coaches, I think there's an old cliche, you get what you pay for. Okay, and that's where we're at. It's nobody's fault. I'm, there, there's no issue here. I think the Indiana Fever did not believe they were going to win the lottery. They won the lottery. They got Caitlin Clark, and that was a shock to them. And that is a shock to Caitlin. And that is a shock to everybody that's sitting out there in the WNBA. And they're criticizing or have Caitlin Clark can't do this. She's not that good. Folks, you get her a coach. Let's be honest. I mean, I threw out a few names. I, I think guys can. I think she may need a band coach. You know, that's something that I, I believe because you know the respect level is going to be difficult. I mean, she's coached by her father. You know, I mean, and when you're a father coaching a daughter, I mean, it's hard. It's hard city, and you, you look at all the camps she's been to and everywhere she's been. You know, and the frustration that's coming out of her now is just because there's no one coaching. I can't put this together, but. I think it'll get fixed, but the inexperience of the Indiana Fever has cost them dramatically. It's put them behind. It's kind of put a bump in the organization. I told you they're gonna re they're gonna retool this roster. There's no doubt about it. Half these players won't even be here. I can guarantee you that. I I, I can put all my experience of coaching, of being in the game, being in the grassroots, and being in the development of getting guys getting to the NBA. These ain't the 144 best players in the world. I do not want the WNBA to speak that anymore because that is not the truth. I, there's better players sitting over there and over there overseas. You can get them here, but you got to pay for them. Okay, and they ain't going to play for $76,000. So you got the best players in the league, in the WNBA today, 
that will play for $76,000. It's not the best players in the world. You got the best players who are willing to play for $76,000. Now, everybody's not willing to do that, and I don't think Kalen's going to be willing to do it either because Kalen Clark can go overseas and get $10 million a year. Okay, let's be honest. Go over to China, maybe get fifteen. If we got a league in Saudi Arabia, why don't we just give her twenty million a year? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You got to pay to play, and 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 when you get to you, you came in there and you got the Porsche last year. Okay, you got Boston. That's the Porsche. You come back this year, you get the Ferrari. Okay, and if you are not have a mechanic to run the the Porsche or the Ferrari, listen to me. You are going to be last in the race, okay? You cannot go out there and get a high-priced, high-running car that's NASCAR ready, that's ready to get out there like Dale Earnhardt and run it like it's never been run before, but you got no engine in the car. Man, Indiana Fever going to fix this. This one here caught me by surprise. I wasn't aware of it, but when I dug into it, I finally figured it out. Indiana Fever folks have no coaching experience. It's the first year for everybody. So now you got the first year for Boston, second year for Boston, the first year for Caitlin Clark. I see why her hands are up in the air because she has to be thinking, what the heck is this? I just left a program that we had lots of coaching, and now I come here and there's no coaching. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We are powered up by Fanatics. All things are possible to those who believe. And you stay tuned for more Indiana Fever news because we're going to bring it right to you. But the deal of the day is Christy Clark and the Indiana Fever, the entire coaching staff, has no coaching experience. Okay? That's the problem. Okay? And if you haven't coached in the league, and I'm not talking about the G League, if you haven't coached in the league in the NBA or you haven't played in the NBA or you haven't coached, Okay, in the WNBA, and you played in the WNBA, that's going to be hard to go in there and talk to a player that has and does it. That's why Jason Kidd can get the respect, okay, coming out of the Dallas, okay, because he's played in the league. And guys have got to know that. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We thank you, all our listeners. We love the support, and we always going to tell you, you keep going higher and higher because we're going to keep getting better and better. All things are possible to those who believe, and we will see you soon. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast.